Bob, you feel like a grandfather today with Mario and the baby? How's that addition to the family? Yeah, he uh, went in there this morning, and a half hour later, he's back in practice. <laughs> Pretty efficient guy. <laughs> you know, they told me he, he said, but you know, Mono, you didn't do anything. You know, your wife is efficient. You're not efficient. You didn't do anything. Well, Rick, uh, Rick Adelman announced his uh, retirement this morning. Uh, How I, did I know he? you've had a oh. uh, great mm. respect for Rick over the years. Just some comments about what he accomplished. In well, he's a special guy. You know, he's one of those guys I call a lifer. He did a good job in several different places. Uh, always made his teams better. Uh, no big drama or anything like that. Uh, did his job and went home. Uh, he's a fine example of, you know, what coaching's all about and how to conduct yourself. So uh, he'll, he'll be missed, but you know, personally, I'm sort of happy for him. You know, <laughs> it's what he wanted to do, and I hope it's a great time. You steal some of that wing offense from him? Absolutely. I think everybody's stolen something from him. Bob, could you talk about the parallels between Duncan and, and Dirk, guys that have been with one franchise out there entire season, multiple all-star games? Well, you know, they're, they're certainly different players, uh, but both great in, in similar ways. And that, you know, starts from the inside. The character of both those guys, the competitiveness, uh, the, the great teammates that they both are, the responsibility they feel to their, their teammates and their organization, uh, the way they come out night after night, you know, all those things are the same about them. That's what really makes them great. How ironic is that neither one of those guys seek the limelight. I mean, they probably could make a lot of more money and endorsements on the field. Yeah, yeah, you know, their priorities are a little different. You know, they, they do their jobs. Uh, they get satisfaction out of that. And they don't really have a, a big need to be seen or be in front of the camera or, uh, you know, make a big to-do about anything. Okay. You know, Tim got going yesterday. Um, you, know, you guys scored 90 as a team. And do you feel like the switching defense had some effectiveness that Dallas was important? Well, I think that uh, you know everybody with two you know good offensive teams the score might be you know 115 to whatever, or 120 to this, and you know one team gets hot and kicks the other team's butt. But that's not the way it is. They're both you know really solid teams and every game is going to be a fight like that. Uh, we were fortunate to get some stops down the stretch. They missed some shots and that's the way the game went. So, you know, Wednesday night, uh, it'll be a totally different animal. Each game is very different. What did you guys do in particular to shut them down those last seven and a half? Uh, if I knew exactly, I probably wouldn't tell you. Uh, <laughs> Because it's never one thing. It really isn't. You know, it's it's a lot of things. Sometimes just circumstances, or you get a call, or somebody misses a shot. Maybe you make a good play one time. It's all of the above. How's Kawhi Leonard developed in, in the short time you guys have had him? He's he's uh, been uh, really steady in his progress, both at both ends of the floor. Uh, really works hard. Wants to be good. Uh, really accepts coaching and a uh, quick learner. Is there any extra pressure on someone like him? You, you trade an established veteran for him uh, on draft night? And, okay. I don't think he feels anything. Okay. No. <laughs> I think he just goes and plays. He's fine. All right, take care.